As a lifelong biker, I'm returning to motorcycling after a break of three years. I want something light and chuckable, but I'm undecided between a 125 or a 250 machine. Today, I try out both, and for me at least, there is a clear winner. Hello, we're at Chapel Lane Caravan and Motorhome Club site near Birmingham. We're relocating from the Outer Hebrides to Dover. And while I'm very sad about that, every cloud has a silver lining. The reason we're at Chapel Lane is because it's just four miles from the HQ of British motorcycle manufacturer, Mutt Motorcycles. Here we are. Here we are. Mutt Motorcycles is a British company specialising in the coolest 125 and 250cc motorcycles on the market. The basic frame and engine are pretty much the same in each size throughout the range and these are made in China. It's the finishing touches such as the seat, handlebars, tank and wheels that define each model and each bike is completed in the UK. Before anybody scoffs, Remember that the bulk of Triumph motorcycles is now made in Thailand and all major players have factories around the world in order to be able to survive and thrive in the modern world. Mutt has a network of dealers throughout the UK as well as many European countries, Japan, Australia, the Philippines and Singapore. But its HQ is this uber cool space in the Kings Norton area of Birmingham. I was bowled over by how friendly and helpful the crew were when I arrived at Mutt. They even offered to look after the dogs for me while I went on my pre-booked test ride. I'd booked the 250cc Mongrel, the bike here with the brown seats, which retails at £3,950. But because I'm interested in a 250 Sabbath, I was also offered a ride on a 125cc Sabbath which is identical in style and riding position to the 250. So first of all, let's take the Sabbath 125 for a spin. As you can hear, for a 125 the engine sounds okay, but at times during this ride you might notice a slightly worrying rasping sound. Off we go, and despite being smaller than what I'm used to, I found the bike to be surprisingly comfortable to ride. A common problem I had with both bikes was the gear shifter, which I had quite the issue getting my boots underneath it to change up. However, stick around as I have some good news on that front later in the video. But with the rubber gear shifter as fitted, you might hear that I encountered more neutrals in Switzerland, but things did get better as I got used to it. As a returning biker used to larger machines, one thing did shock me, and that was how long the bike took to accelerate when twisting the throttle. Top speeds are one thing, but lack of torque is another. This is no criticism of the mutt, but something to be aware of if you're coming back into biking and you're used to riding big machines. Despite the narrow width of the bike, its lack of oomph gave me no confidence at all to filter in stationary traffic. All through the ride, I had to rev the bike hard and have the throttle fully open to even try and achieve 40 miles an hour where permitted. And if there was an uphill incline, then it struggled to even get to 40 miles an hour.
All in all, the bike was comfortable, fun and flickable, but not flighty. But I felt like I was constantly wringing its neck to get it to perform, which didn't make for the most enjoyable bike ride I've ever had. As a 125, the Mutt Sabbath oozes appeal and is as cool as a cucumber. But I was certainly looking forward to giving the 250 a try. <laughs> So now let's have a try of the Mongrel 250. Start it up and you can already hear that with the stock pipes it sounds way more satisfying than the 125. You might notice that the Mongrel, which is also available as a 125, has wider handlebars which make for more steady steering, but to be honest I had zero issues with the narrower bars of the Sabbath. Off we go, and before we'd even got out of the car park, I knew that this engine felt heaps better to me than the 125. Scooshing around roundabouts, the 250 retains the lightweight and flickability that I'm after, yet it boasts considerably more torque for faster and more fun getaways. Flatting around town at 30 and 40 miles an hour, it was so much more relaxing and enjoyable on the 250 where you could focus more on enjoying the ride than having to concentrate on wringing its neck. It was also way more enjoyable to keep up to 40 miles an hour uphill where permitted. While I don't intend to use motorways if I can help it, there are bound to be times when I'm running late for a train and I need to get to the station as quickly as possible. So for this scenario, I took the mongrel down onto the M42. Realistically, it cruised nicely at 60 miles an hour. It can go faster, but once again, you'd be thrashing it rather than riding it. Coming back the other way, you can hear just how much happier the bike is at 50 miles an hour as I eased off the throttle for roadworks. One thing hasn't changed in my three years away from riding, and that is the amount of car drivers who are out to kill you. You might notice here that even though I sounded my horn to alert this driver to my presence, he took absolutely no evasive action whatsoever. There was just about enough power to overtake this guy who kept on rolling at 50 miles an hour, but as I've already said, this bike is never intended to be a fast motorway munching machine. Now keep an eye out for the white car joining the roundabout from the left. Nice one, love.
Where you go? <laughs> and they're off. It's all good. It's still good. It looks so vicious, but Ted just goes back for more. Okay, thank you. Dougal, thank you, yes. <laughs> right. We finished? We finished? When I got back to Mutt HQ, I mentioned about the difficulty I had getting my foot under the gear shifter, and the guys there gave me the great news that this is in the process of being updated and upgraded. This GTSR250 has the new drilled gear shifter fitted, which gives you a few more millimetres to get your boot underneath it. And trying it out in the showroom, it made a massive difference, practically night and day. If I end up getting a mutt, I would 100% insist on this upgrade, no matter which model I went for. So if you are a returning biker, looking for something small and light to ease you back into biking, should you go for a 125 or a 250? A 125 will definitely be easier to sell on when you have your confidence back and you're ready to step up to something bigger. But its total lack of oomph and the requirement to make it scream is tiresome. The 250 has enough power to deliver an enjoyable ride around town and on A and B roads without needing to thrash the pants off it. Yes, it's still small enough and light enough to throw about and have a metric ton of fun riding. For me, it is a no-brainer. It's 250 all the way. So something a little bit different today. Uh, we'll be back to leisure vehicles in our next video, but I do like bikes and I know a lot of people watching like bikes, so I hope you found it useful. And if you too are a returning biker and you're undecided between a 125 or a 250, I hope you found this useful. Before any smart Alec says, oh, it's not electric. Um, yeah, it's not electric because I still like petrol bikes in the same way I still love steam trains and I'm not looking to tow a caravan with it, so I don't need that torque. I do love the Maving electric motorbikes, but unfortunately they only go 40 miles an hour, they're city bikes, and I need something at more country use where I need to be able to go 50, 60 miles an hour. Also, I don't have the money required for a zero motorbike. The Mutt 250 is a little over 4,000 pounds, and the zero is uh, considerably more than that. So that's why, I'm looking at a mutt and yeah, now it's just which one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it folks. If you did, you know what to do. Please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you don't already. It just leaves me to say from Dougal, from Ted, from the barking dog next door and from me, thanks for churning in. There. What do you reckon boys? You excited? You excited about getting another bike? I think you are Dougal. I think you're excited. What about you Ted? You excited? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they never smile. <laughs> you weren't very impressed when I went off and left you yesterday, were you, Dougal? No, you were not impressed about that. And you, you've still got your training to do for the other rucksack. Yes, you have, Menace. Still lots of training to do.